This is the most expensive piece of paper that I own and I don't even know what it says because it's in Latin. Hi, I'm May. I recently graduated from Brown University in 2021 with a bachelor's in public health and I was also accepted into medical school this cycle and will be starting in a few weeks. When I was a first year in college, I was really curious about what other people took outside of their pre-med requirements, and so today I'll be sharing all of the classes that I took while at Brown. As some background, Brown has something called the open curriculum, which means that we effectively don't have any general education requirements except for two semesters of a writing intensive course, which can be taken in pretty much any department our grading scheme is A, B, C, and then not shown on transcript. And so we don't have any pluses or minuses, which personally for me was a lot less stressful than high school grading. We also have the option to S and C or pass fail any of our classes, but any class with an S asterisk on my transcript means that it was a mandatory pass fail class that could not be taken for an A, B, C grade option. So going into my first year, I was already interested in pursuing medicine. In high school, I had shadowed cardiothoracic surgeons as well as cardiologists and hospitalists. So right off the bat, I wanted to get started on some of my pre-medical requirements. I took Gen Chem, which at our university is Equilibrium Rate and Structure, and this was a really tough course. It was kind of like AP chemistry, but now you have to learn the things that your high school chemistry teacher said you'll eventually learn in college. Like molecular orbitals, hybridization, quantum mechanics. This professor was genuinely probably one of the smartest people I've ever met. While this class was really difficult, I think it set up my foundation for preparing for college level classes. I also took intro to neuroscience, which was not a pre-med requirement, but I was potentially thinking about concentrating in neuroscience. It was a very rote memorization based class, um, pretty straightforward, and I learned a lot. Third, I took science and social controversy. I wanted to take a smaller seminar in my first year since a lot of my other classes were large lecture classes. This was a really interesting bioethics and philosophy class that talked about broad range of scientific articles, events, and concepts. And the final paper for this class was really intellectually stimulating. I wrote about the need for codified ethics within surgery. And finally, my fourth class in my first semester was a studio foundation course. This was a very fun, low stress class, as you can tell from this photo. And this studio foundation course was a prerequisite for all of the other more advanced classes. Going into my second semester, I took Organic Chemistry 1, Intro to Poetry, Introductory Calculus Part 2, which is essentially the equivalent of Calculus BC, and Healthcare in the US. At Brown, we do take Organic Chemistry 1 typically in our first year. This is a very conceptually heavy class where we laid down the foundation for concepts we would need in organic chemistry too. So things like structure and bonding, stereochemistry, nucleophilic reactions, all of that jazz, and learning how to write out mechanisms and figuring out synthesis intermediates. Brown's chemistry department is on beast mode because I feel like I learned so much from my chemistry classes. While my chemistry classes were probably one of the most challenging classes I've taken in my undergrad career, they were also ones in which I learned and actually maintained information the most. I'll link a video up here where I ranked most of my pre-med classes from most personally challenging to least. I took calculus just to fulfill the math requirement if any schools would require a semester of college level calculus. So I just wanted to cover all my bases, but in the end, I don't think it was really necessary because I ended up taking more than two semesters of statistics. Introduction to poetry was a writ class. I've always really loved poetry, so workshopping poems in this class was a breath of fresh air. And healthcare in the US was the class that made me want to concentrate in public health. The professor for this class is very well loved and we had plenty of guest lectures that talked about different topics within healthcare policy and and the healthcare system in the United States. We learned about how access to health insurance is related to life expectancy and other health outcomes, how important preventive health is and how underprioritized it is in the United States, and so many other topics that really gave me an important lens on how um, population health and health policy are related to care received on a community and personal level. During this first year, I also got involved in cardiothoracic surgery research at the Rhode Island Cardiovascular Research Center. This taught me a lot about scientific inquiry, replicable research, and six science techniques that are used in a lot of labs. Just when you thought that this was the end of my first year, I actually ended up taking a summer course at Stanford. I took CS106A, which was the introductory computer science class, where you learn sort of the basics of coding and data structures. 
maybe because I'm from Silicon Valley, but in my first few years of college, I kind of had this identity crisis of whether I wanted to perhaps pursue computer science. I distinctly remember we had to code a snowman hangman and I just was like sobbing over this project because I didn't understand how libraries worked. Figured it out, I ended up doing well in the class. It was a good experience that clarified what I wanted to do in my next year. You also might be asking, why didn't you take a computer science class in your first semester? One, probably because I lacked the motivation to actually take the class, and two, because the introductory computer science classes at Brown are notorious for being very, very time consuming, something like upwards of 30 hours a week. Um, and so I didn't feel confident doing that plus all of my pre-med requirements at the same time. Going into second year, I took Principles of Physiology, Organic Chemistry, The Digital World, and Introduction for Public Health. Principles of Physiology and Organic Chemistry both had lab, and so this was definitely an exercise in time management. I love physiology. We learned about all of the different organ systems and really reaffirmed that medicine was something I wanted to pursue. Organic Chemistry 2 built on the conceptual foundation for Organic Chemistry 1, which meant now that we had to learn a ton more mechanisms. This was definitely one of the hardest classes I think I had to take during my time at Brown just because there's a ton of information being presented to us that was still very conceptually challenging. I took CS20, the digital world, as you can see, still pursuing the CS identity crisis, and this was more of a history of computing type of class combined with less intensive coding projects than our introductory computer science classes at Brown. Having taken healthcare in the US, I now knew I kind of wanted to pursue public health, and so I took introduction to public health as a concentration requirement. Moving on to semester four, I took biochemistry as my major pre-med requirement. I think this class was most similar to the material that I will be learning in medical school. Definitely recommend taking this before your MCAT as it was a subject that was heavily featured. I also took biomaterials, which was a really interesting class on medical devices, biocompatible materials, and also some medical history. My final project was a timeline of the events leading up to the development of a lead list pacemaker. As a public health elective, I took designing education for better prisoner community health. I really liked that this class was a form of engaged scholarship. This class really taught me that developing a intervention for a community focuses on the needs of the community themselves rather than just your own research. So leading up to the development of our health education intervention, we had to speak to a lot of key community stakeholders, including corrections officers, incarcerated individuals, and folks that had family members who were affected by incarceration. And finally, I took The Craving Mind, which is also another public health elective and ended up being one of my favorite classes at Brown. It was a weekly seminar and we started every class off with a 15 minute meditation. We learned about the habit loop, addiction, and how mindfulness can be used as a public health intervention for addiction. I ended up loving the class so much that I got in touch with the professor and ended up doing research with him in my junior year. The summer after my second year, I continued my interest within cardiothoracic surgery by conducting research at Stanford University. You can learn more about my internship experience in this video, and I also have a video about how to cold email for research opportunities linked in the description below. Now getting into my junior year, so during the semester, the class that's listed independent study engineering was actually a course that I took called Design Plus Health. This was such an interesting class where I learned a lot of design principles. We had guest lectures from RISD professors, and I also was able to shadow physicians in the trauma department at Rhode Island Hospital in development for my project. I learned a lot about user experience, iterative design, and digital health intervention development. For a public health requirement, I took Fundamentals of Epidemiology, which is particularly relevant now. Hand in hand with that, I took Biostatistics and Data Analysis, also in the Public Health Department, which was probably one of the most practically useful courses I took at Brown, which taught me how to use R for data analysis. And finally, for my pre-med requirement of the semester, I took Physics A. This was our non-calculus physics sequence that taught us kinematics. Now going into junior spring, I took five courses. I continued with physics B, which was e &M. I also had an independent study, which was just time for me to conduct research for credit. I was working on a project looking at the potential mechanism that mindfulness targets anxiety to improve sleep disturbances. I also took the follow-up course to The Craving Mind with my research professor called Measuring Mindfulness, where we looked at different subjective and objective measures for measuring components or facets of mindfulness. I took Artificial Intelligence and Biology Pass-Fail, and this was a really intense coding class. It was marketed as a 
introductory artificial intelligence class for non-CS concentrators. However, there were a ton of people who were concentrating in machine learning and computer science in my class, and I definitely don't think it was for people without any coding experience. We worked on some really cool projects though. I think our first project was using machine learning to predict recurrent hospitalizations. So you would have a training set that you would train your algorithm on and then a separate data set to test your accuracy in your predictions. I did every single extra credit option for the assignments because I actually thought I was gonna fail the class. And ironically, my professor ended up asking me to be a TA, to which I said, no, sir. <laughs> for my biology with lab requirement for pre-med, I took introductory microbiology, which is a very well-known class at Brown. I really enjoyed the lab portion of this class. Gram stating was really fun, looking at the bacteria under microscopes. This was also the semester where everything transitioned online due to the pandemic. It was a kind of chaotic end to the semester, but most of my classes ended up transitioning pretty well. I need a coffee break. Okay, moving into our final year. I took biomedical informatics, creative nonfiction as a pre-med English requirement, a disability health class, environmental health for a public health requirement, and then finally a course for my honors thesis preparation. In biomedical informatics, we learned about EHRs, telehealth, clinical decision support. Bioinformatics is continuing to be rising in importance as we have greater amounts of data that has been digitalized in the use for research and medical decision support. For our final paper, we had to do either a meta-analysis or systematic review and mine was on the role of telehealth in access to mental health care. Intro to Creative Nonfiction was also a workshop-based class similar to Introduction to Poetry. This class is usually so popular that there's a lottery to get in, so I really had to weasel my way into this class. I took a class on disability health and disability justice, and this was a really, really impactful class in terms of how I frame disability as a aspiring medical professional. For instance, in the medical model, disability is often seen as something that is needed to be cured. In the late 20th century, the social model essentially stated that society disables a person with disabilities when it fails to create a barrier-free environment. People with significant disabilities account for a really large fraction of the US population, over 12%. We also learned about how historically disability-based discrimination has been tied to racism and xenophobia. Legislation, including the Americans with Disability Act, have been incredibly influential in pushing forward the disability justice movement. I would say this is a class that had one of the most lasting impacts on my way of thinking and has really shaped my approach to advocacy within public health and medicine. We also had a guest lecture on systemic autism and the impact on the deaf community. This was such an impactful lecture to me that I ended up taking American Sign Language in my final semester. Environmental health was a class on environmental health and occupational safety, kind of just took it as a requirement. And then I went back to take my last semester in person and took human anatomy and biomechanics and applied regression analysis, which was the second semester of biostatistics within the public health department, my final semester of honors thesis preparation, and then American Sign Language. I already kind of touched on how I decided to take American Sign Language, but I love this class. ASL is a really spatially oriented language, which made it very unique from any class I've taken before. We also learned about deaf culture and the deaf community, framing deafness as something that you gain in terms of community and a way of thinking rather than a loss of hearing. Applied regression analysis, we learned about linear regression. Again, a very practical class. At the end of my honors thesis preparation, I presented at Public Health Day and ended up getting runner up for best undergraduate poster. My thesis also ended up culminating in a co-first authored paper, which was really exciting for me. I think that had a really big impact on my medical school application. I also took human anatomy and biomechanics, which was the first semester that this class was being taught. It was new. We learned a little bit about evolutionary and developmental biology, embryology. We learned about biomechanics of bone and looking at the anatomy and motion of throwing and lower limb movement. For my final project, I ended up doing a presentation on the evolutionary development of the foot in humans. Particularly, I was interested in the arch and flat-footedness because I'm a flat-footed person. The labs were also super interesting because they involved us demonstrating movements while learning anatomy. So definitely recommend this class. It was really cool. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and this gave you some inspiration for classes that you might want to take while you're in college. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.